T.W. Dakota. T.W. Dakota. Are you there? Do you read me over? It's no use. I can't even get through. Look. Here's the letter. And it's dated October 12th, 1812. And it's not finished yet. My dearest brother, when the Americans declared war on us last July, they thought that with our small population, Canada would be forced to surrender without a fight. Ex-President Jefferson bragged that the acquisition of Canada was a mere matter of marching. Many Canadians shared this viewpoint and feared that our men would defect to the other side. On the contrary, the men deserve the highest praise for their behavior. The capture of Fort Detroit has given us all a tremendous sense of pride. Think of it, dear brother. Although we were outnumbered two to one, the Americans surrendered without firing a shot. That's dumb. Why would the Americans surrender if they had more men? And they didn't even fire a shot? Wars are not necessarily won by the side with the largest armies. Did no one ever inform you that it is extremely impertinent to read another person's letter? Yes, sir. We're sorry. Who are you? I'm Samantha Nicker. And I'm Chris Anderson. We were just trying to find out where we are. You don't know where you are? No, sir. You see, we came here by... Well, it's sort of an accident. It's from the future. Young lady, is this some form of joke? You've run away from home, that's it, isn't it? No, sir. Sam's telling the truth. We're from the future. You see, we found this diagram, and we think it's this fort. But we don't know its name. How do I know that you're not American spies? You might be concocting this incredible tale just to escape punishment. Look at our clothes. See how different they are? And this type of pen. It wasn't invented in 1812. You don't need ink. It's already inside. Suppose I decided to believe your story, and I don't say that I do, but just suppose I did. Why are you here? We're looking for someone else from our time. He's a boy about our age, and he's black. Black? There are many black people in Canada, men and women who were slaves in the southern United States. They escaped, traveled the Underground Railway to freedom in Canada. Now they're fighting on our side against the Americans. He wouldn't be a slave, sir. In our time, the 1980s, there are no slaves. Hmm. Your time sounds very promising. Wait here. I shall go and make inquiries about your friend. And for your information, this is Fort George. And I am General Brock in charge of the defense of Upper Canada. General Brock. That was the name that was on the compass. Remember? Two to come to from Brock. Well, what are you doing? I'm checking the control panel. Didn't my uncle mention something about a selector switch? We've got to find some way to communicate with Lynn, or we'll never get home. This must be it. Try it now. T.W. to coach him. Are you receiving us? Over. Lynn, are you there? Please answer. Look, we're getting through. She's not going to believe us. T.W. to coach him. We've gone back to the year 1812. It's October 12th, 1812, and it's about 10.30 in the morning. How did she know that? She must have figured it out from the diagram. Yes, we're with General Brock. Tell her to find...
find out everything she can. It might help us get back. But be concise. Need information about Fort George and General Brock. Quickly. Good. Wait, there's more. How about that? Here we are, stuck in the middle of a war, and she wants us to do an interview. May I ask who wants some interview? It's a friend from our time. We can talk to her on this. It's kind of a two-way communications device that lets us keep in contact with each other. Look, Lynn's sending us another message. Please, Lynn, General Brock is listening. I'm sorry, sir. Lynn doesn't mean... Enough. After all, it is well known that I have my hat sent from England, such as there are none in this country that will fit me. However, let's leave these matters to history and talk about the present. I have news of your friend. He was found in the fort this morning. No one believed his fantastic claim of being from the future. They all presumed he was a deserter from the Black Regiment to pass through Fort George several days ago. Where is he now? Being escorted under guard back to his regiment for punishment. What will happen to him? Well, deserters can be shot. But, considering his age, he'll probably escape with a severe flogging. Can you stop them? Well, the Americans are massing their troops across the river. I expect them to launch an invasion within a day or two. I cannot spare any of my men to help bring him back. Could we go after him? It'd be dangerous. You're unfamiliar with our woods. They're rugged, wild. If you became lost, however, I admire courage. I'll provide you with a letter from me and some suitable clothing. You must remain as inconspicuous as possible. Fit in with our time. Not look any different. Come on, then. Let's go and find you some proper clothes. And then I'll show you Fort George and you can have your interview. I have scouts returning from the trail that will take you to Queenston. We'll wait to see if it's safe. I hope that history will have something more significant to say of me than the size of my head. What did the Americans think they were in the first place? The Americans have wanted the English out of North America since the American Revolution. England's now too busy fighting a war of her own in Europe to help defend her colonies here. So it's up to the English and the French settlers in Canada to fight for our country. Ah, Jenkins, a word with you. This is our quartermaster. He keeps all our supplies in order. Jenkins, do you think it would be possible to find some suitable clothing for my two young friends here? Aye, sir, I think so. Though the young lady may present a problem. Come on, Sam. We haven't got all day. Can anybody see me? Remember what General Brock said. We must be inconspicuous. I don't care. I feel silly. Oh, you look fine, both of you. And here are those lyrics you wanted, Maddie. Thanks. Soldiers sing a song with General Brock. Mr. Jenkins wrote down the words for her. You see, miss, the general's a brave soldier. And the men will follow him anywhere. You won't find a man in this fort that wouldn't be proud to lay down his life for General Brock. He must treat you very well. He's not soft. Don't be making a mistake of thinking he's soft. The general catches someone who's neglecting his duty. Well, miss, you just wouldn't want to be in that poor soldier's shoes, and that's a fact. And he demands our best efforts at all times. But he's fair, and he cares about it. So it's no hardship to give him our best. This is a terrific song. How does the tune go? Well, uh, sort of like this. At 
Length our brave commander, Sir Isaac, brought by name. Strategy, being able to plan, knowing your enemy. That's how we're going to win against an army that outnumbers us by two to one. Is that how you captured Fort Detroit? Exactly. General Howell had, ooh, 2,500 men under his command at Fort Detroit. We had barely 1,300. 700 of my soldiers. 600 of our Indian allies, led by my good friend, Chief Tecumseh. How did you expect to win? By knowing my enemy. I knew that General Hull was a loud mountain braggart who was terrified of Indians. So, Tecumseh led his men out, and they camped within earshot of the fort. They lit huge campfires, and all through the night, the woods echoed with the sound of Indian war cries. I bet that's your general, Hull. Oh, yes, it did. Next morning, we marched straight up to the fort. We marched proudly out in the open as if we weren't afraid of anything. And it worked. The moment we fired our cannon, they ran up the white flag of surrender. Fort Detroit was ours. How come you're still fighting? Well, lad, winning a battle doesn't mean you've won the war. The Americans are no fools. Already they've replaced their leaders with better men. Their troops are massed across that river. And they're going to strike soon. The scouts have just returned, sir. The trail to Queenston appears safe. Ah, thank you, Jack. Come, we must be off. lies your road to Queenston. That's where your friend is being held prisoner. Give the guard this letter. My order for his release. Go quickly, or night time will catch you still in the forest. Do you think we'll ever see him again? I hope so. I've never met anybody quite like him before. Oh. 